What's up you guys? Welcome to the Trail and Travel channel. I am so freaking excited to share this video with you today. It is all about our trip to Iceland. Now, there is so much that happened on our trip to Iceland. I'm going to break this into like four or five different videos so that you can really soak up our whole experience. And I want to provide a lot of information about traveling there, about what to do, all the good things like that. So it's going to take a few videos. So today's video is going to touch on a few specific topics. First one is going to be the logistics of traveling to Iceland. What is it like? What do you experience? All that kind of stuff. The second topic I want to hit on is Reykjavik, which is the center, the capital of Iceland. And, and the following videos will have a lot more information on other parts of Iceland and other topics like that. So let's go ahead and dive into topic number one of this Iceland video. So logistics of traveling to Iceland. We live in Utah, St. George, Utah. So the closest large airport that we have is Las Vegas. So from St. George, Utah to Las Vegas is about a two hour drive. So we left at 9 a.m. in the morning. We drove all the way to Las Vegas. Our flight departed at 12.30ish. So from there, we had a four hour flight to JFK. We had about an hour layover. When we arrived in JFK with the time change, it was about nine o'clock at night. We boarded our next flight at about 11. Our flight was just over five hours to get into the Keflavik. This is the major Icelandic airport that you will fly into. All other airports are fairly small and most likely you will not take a direct international flight from any other airport but the Keflavik airport. This airport is located about an hour-ish away from Reykjavik and we ended up landing in the Keflavik airport at about 9 a.m. It was about 18 and a half hours straight travel from home all the way to the Keflavik airport. Once we were there, we picked up a car rental. We ended up renting a little Suzuki Jimny and it was the perfect car while we were in Iceland. It's just me and Brock, so we really just needed a two-seater vehicle. So once we picked up our rental car, we ended up driving into Reykjavik, which did take about an hour. From there, we hung out at a little local bakery. The first thing on our agenda in Iceland was to go to the Sky Lagoon. Oh my gosh, it definitely lived up to all the hype surrounding it. I highly recommend you check out the Sky Lagoon. We got there at about 12 p.m. and we signed up for the date night package. So this includes the seven step ritual. We also upgraded to get private changing rooms and this also included two free drinks and a charcuterie board at the end. So it was the full package. It was the real deal and it was so worth it. Honestly, it was the perfect timing after we traveled for 18 and a half hours and just relax and enjoy our time in Iceland. That first day there was a little bit rainy and so the contrast of the hot water and the sprinkling rain was just incredible. They also had a cold tub outside. So you could bounce back and forth between the hot water and the cold tub and it was just so refreshing and felt incredible. So let's dive into the seven step ritual. What the heck is that? I'm going to walk you through all of it. So it starts with soaking in the Sky Lagoon, the hot spring there and it is the perfect temperature. You can go to different parts of the lagoon where it is hotter, where it is a little bit cooler, and there was plenty of space there. The second step to this ritual is diving into the cold pool. Now, you don't have to participate in every single one of these steps if you don't want to, but I highly recommend it just because it adds such a good flavor to the whole experience. So you dip in the hot spring, you go into the cold pool, to enter in this little hut of a building and go straight into the sauna. The sauna was incredible. So it's a nice dry sauna, this enormous window and this beautiful view of the harbor, the ocean water. And like I said, we happened to be there on a day it was like sprinkling. So we had this like gray, beautiful skies with some sprinkling water and the green ground. Oh and they recommend staying in the sauna for 10 to 15 minutes. 
Once you are done there, they transition you into a cool mist area. Now this area is pretty much outside. The roof is open and they have little misters going. So it's spraying you with cold water. It was also raining at that time. So you were getting the rain, the natural rain. You were being misted by cool water and it was just very refreshing after the sauna. The fourth step to the seven step ritual is a body scrub. They have some handcrafted body scrubs for you. You scrub your whole body with this amazing sugar scrub. It's used to detoxify the body and really get rid of any dead skin. After the sugar scrub, you're going to get inside the wet sauna. This one is a very hot, steamy room with very high humidity in it. And stay in the wet sauna as long as you feel good. You can feel the sugar scrub starting to come off of you at this point. Once you are done in the wet sauna, you go ahead and take a shower to rinse off the sugar scrub, cool yourself back down. And finally, the last step of the seven step ritual is to get back into the sky lagoon. So it's a fully immersive package and I highly recommend if you are in Iceland and specifically Reykjavik, take yourself to the Sky Lagoon. You will not regret it. It is the most incredible experience. We did get our charcuterie board where they gave us a beautiful spread of cheeses, of different meats, breads, all kinds of incredible foods that was our first little experience of what Icelandic cuisine is like. From the Sky Lagoon, we decided to go check into our hotel. We ended up staying in Reykjavik at the Exeter Hotel. And this hotel was very nice, very cute, and it was downtown, located in a place that was easy to walk to, tons of different eateries, and, and we got upgraded to the junior suite while we were staying at the Exeter. It was such a cute little place. We had this beautiful view of the harbor. There was a huge cruise ship close by. It was just a really cool spot. My only thing with staying at the Exeter is they don't have their own parking garage or parking at all. So we ended up parking about a block down the street, which I was totally fine with. However, the parking in Reykjavik is insanely expensive. So to park there overnight costed us about $40. And yeah, that would be my only hesitation with recommending staying at the Exeter. Otherwise, everything else was incredible there. They provided you with plenty of toiletries. They had little shaving kits, shower packs, toothpaste, toothbrush, everything that you could need on a vacation. They had there just in case you forgot it. Completely complimentary of charge. After checking into the Exeter Hotel, we just lounged around a bit. We were absolutely exhausted. Had been awake for almost two days straight, so we took a little nap before we went to dinner. That night we went to dinner at the Apotec Kitchen, and I believe that means apothecary in Icelandic or some version of that, because it looked like it was in an old apothecary or like pharmacy type building, which was really cool. This restaurant was located just about 5-10 minutes away from where we were staying, so we were able to walk to dinner and that was really fun. Walking the streets of Iceland and specifically Reykjavik was just incredible. You totally feel like you're in a Scandinavian country. It just feels so grounded and down to earth. You have the rain sprinkling on you a little bit. Dinner was so good at the Apotec kitchen. I highly recommend getting the Arctic char at least once while you're in Iceland and Icelandic lamb. That is like the best things that you can get while you're in Iceland to really get that full experience. So that was day one of Iceland. After dinner, we went back to our hotel and slept for like 12 hours. We were completely exhausted. The next day, we started our day with some donuts and a bagel from a little tiny bakery that was right inside the Exeter Hotel. And oh my gosh, it was mind blowing. We got a creme brulee donut and they brulee the donut right in front of us. And it was a spectacle. Everyone that was in the hotel stopped and watched because it was amazing. Also, this is what I have left. But this was a creme brulee donut. It's cream leaking out my face. Feed it to yes. me. <laughs>
From there, we went to a local coffee shop and got some coffee, which was right outside the Halgrim's Kirka. This is a major tourist spot inside of Ice, and specifically Reykjavik. The Halsgrim Kirka is a massive church that has the resemblance of basalt stones. This church took 41 years to build and they started building this in 1945. Just in front of the Halsgrim Kirka is a statue of Leif Erikson. Leif Erikson is a Norse explorer who is said to have reached the North Americas before Columbus. He was born in about 970. So over a thousand years ago, this explorer was originally from Iceland, was raised in Greenland, and somehow traveled to North America and discovered the North American continent before anyone else knew about it. Right next to the Hal Grimm's Kirka is the infamous Reykjavik Rainbow Street. So of course we had to go to the Rainbow Street and it's this cute little downtown area where the street is completely closed down and there are little tables for eateries and different things like that and it's just a really really cute spot. The rainbow streets can be found all around the island of Iceland. These rainbow streets are a sign of joy and a celebration of diversity. After exploring the Halsgrim Kirka we decided to go to the Perlin Museum. I definitely did not have this museum on any sort of itinerary, but Brock wanted to go, so we definitely went and explored it. If you have children and you decide to travel to Iceland, this would be a perfect spot for them. We're at Perlin. We're at an 85 foot spinning glass dome where there is a virtual aurora borealis demonstration there is a real life ice cave i'm excited for the ice cave i believe i saw a picture of a whale in there there's no I, way there's I think a whale those are in there. water tank but if we don't see the northern lights we get like a little glimpse of what the northern lights would be like which is cool inside the museum there are all kinds of exhibits that familiarize you with local plants, with local animals, fish, any sort of wildlife that you may experience while you're in Iceland. There are also exhibits that specifically teach you about glaciers and how many of them have melted in the past 200 years and how they expect all the glaciers in Iceland to be gone in the next 200 years, which is devastating. We also got to watch this incredible documentary on the Aurora Borealis. This was just a little taste of what we were hoping to experience while we were in Iceland, and it was phenomenal. Oh, go, go. <laughs> took the mic. Whoa, look at this. It's so cold. <laughs> so cold. So cold. <laughs> After exploring the museum, we went to the rooftop cafe and just looked over the city. This museum happens to be located up on the hill and you have this incredible 360 degree view of Reykjavik and the surrounding area. After the exploration in the museum, we decided to head up to the Snefelsnes Peninsula. All right, that is going to wrap up our Reykjavik and our logistics video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you've been to Iceland and what you recommend as far as experiences in Reykjavik itself. Remember to subscribe to my channel so you can catch my next video on the Snefelsnes Peninsula. I know you want to see all the amazing places to travel to in Iceland, so make sure you subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys for watching. I will catch you in the next video, which will feature the Snefelsnes Peninsula. Mm -hmm.